Well, good morning. And uh, can I add my welcome to Tim's? We are at the end of, I guess, just another week of living in a world that's being turned completely upside down. And the pace of the change over the last few weeks has just been absolutely staggering. And we have been going through this process of just letting things go bit by bit until we reach this kind of point of lockdown. And I think all of us at this time are facing huge challenges. For some, that's the acute loneliness that comes from being isolated, alone. For others, it's coping with a very full house and perhaps some of the stresses that come with homeschooling. And for others, there is just a huge cloud of deep financial uncertainty and loss. Anyway, all of us are facing challenges. I think the biggest challenge for me personally has been prioritising in this time. Everything's changed. A lot of the old ways of doing things have gone. A lot of the things I would normally be doing, I can't do anymore. But in the midst of that, this whole new world of possibility, uh, of opportunity, of need has opened up. And the question in that is, what is most important in this season? I wonder what your answer to that question would be. Maybe it's food and, and getting basic essentials. Maybe it's your health. Maybe it's your family. Well, the more I think about it, the more I've thought about it this week, the more I realise that actually the answer to that question is the same that it always is in every season. It's the question of how we foster our relationship with God in this particular season. This is John chapter 15 verse 5. This is Jesus talking. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, separate from me, you can do nothing. Whether you're in a time of extreme busyness or in full stillness, Jesus is saying that the most important thing is to remain connected to him. And that's the whole ball game. Now I'm sat in the garden. Um, I've actually spent quite a lot of time in the garden over this last week, not because I've uh, got nothing better to do, but because I've been looking after the kids quite a lot. And actually they've been happiest out in the garden. We spent a lot of time out here playing. And um, obviously at this time of year, the garden is growing rapidly. You don't have to be Monty Don to uh, know that. And there is a certain sort of irony, isn't there, that as the rest of society just shuts down completely, uh, nature is just starting to flourish and grow all around us. And so uh, you'll know if you've walked past that our garden is a bit of a, a mess. The plants definitely aren't observing the rules of social distancing. And all this growth is going on and some of it is good growth and some of it is bad growth. And so as we've been out here, we've spent actually quite a lot of time chopping things back. Justin Early uh, has written a book called The Common Rule, Habits of Purpose for an Age of Distraction that I'm reading. And uh, he, he talks about a, a jasmine plant that his mum planted when he was a child. And the jasmine plant is a, is a twining vine, which means that it, it's constantly sending these shoots out towards neighbouring plants and and what happens if you leave it to do that it will overgrow and eventually destroy those other plants and the solution is that you build a, a, a trellis for the the plant to grow up on and that's what his mum did his mum built uh, a trellis against the garage wall and that enabled them to direct the growth of this jasmine up the wall so that after a, a summer or two the whole wall would be covered with this beautiful display of yellow flowers giving this uh, lovely fragrant smell. So jasmine will grow at all times uh, whether the growth is good or, or bad it's going to grow and early suggests that we are the same. This is what he says our lives are something like a jasmine plant and our days and weeks are something like the trellis. At best we're made to grow upward blossom beautifully and fill the earth with all the rich fragrance of God's uncountable glories. Yet we are fallen, we are twisted, but that doesn't mean we don't grow. It means that we grow sideways in ways we weren't meant to, often twisting into something that kills us and hurts those around us. Should we do nothing, we will still grow. 
but we're likely to grow into habits that are destructive, not only to us, but to those around us. He's saying that our days and our weeks are the trellis. Now, our trellis over the last couple of weeks has been completely torn down, the trellis of normal life, but we are still growing. And so the question is, how are we going to grow in this time when everything has changed? Now in John 15, Jesus is facing his death and the disciples are facing this uncertain time and everything that they've built their life around up to this point is unravelling and they're facing a, a whole new world and the challenges of finding new ways of operating as disciples of Jesus. And Jesus is explaining to them how to be disciples in this new era and he gives them three things in these verses to focus on. So the first one is to remain in him remain in him and and really this is the central point isn't it of this vine and branches metaphor branches need to be connected to the vine otherwise they shrivel and die jesus is going but the disciples need to remain in him the second thing he says is that they need to seek fruitfulness this is verse eight this is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. Now, if you're like me and juggling a whole dizzying array of priorities at the moment, a good question to be asking is, where is the fruit? You know, there's an awful lot that we can do, but what is God calling us to do in this season? What is fruitful? And if this idea of fruit, if you're wondering what do we mean by fruitful, well, there's a whole bunch of different ways to explain that, but let's go back to basics. Galatians 5, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. These are the fruit of the Spirit. And it's a good question to ask in all that we're doing in our days, where are those things? Where is the fruit? Remain in him, seek fruitfulness and then thirdly he tells them to ask and this is uh, verse 7 if you remain in me and my words remain in you ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you now of course we need connection with God for its own sake we were built for that but actually remaining in him is about positioning ourselves to be able to ask to receive his blessing. Our Heavenly Father wants to give to us. He wants to bless us, but we need to ask. And in order to ask, we need to be connected. Keeps coming back to this idea, this first idea of remaining in him. But what does that mean and how do we do it? Well, in World War II, uh, C.S. Lewis wrote a letter in which he suggested that it's when our normal patterns and flows are interrupted that we discover who we really are. Now that's quite a sobering thought for some of us who are parents who get interrupted all the time. But we are now at a time of national, I guess international interruption. And I think we are all learning quite a lot about who we really are. But it doesn't end with who we are today because our development does not go on hold, even though the whole country kind of has. We're like this garden. We are constantly growing, constantly becoming. And the question is, who are we becoming in this season? Here's three suggestions for how we can become people who remain in Jesus, abide in him. Firstly, build your trellis intentionally. In all this chaos, some of us are run off our feet, some of us are sitting in the doldrums of a uh, furlough. But we are all in a time of building a new trellis. Structures are forming, whether we realise it or not. And the question is, do we do that intentionally or not? If we do it intentionally, we can make room for God in this new way of doing things for each of us. Firstly, build your trellis intentionally. Secondly, enlist support. We need each other in this time. And obviously we can't meet together, but we still need each other. And if we involve one another, if we do this together, we will help one another build better trellises. 
Now, if you're struggling with loneliness, then technology is obviously a godsend to you right now. Can I suggest that we use it not just for sort of big group messages or message boards, but in particular in small groups? Maybe there's just one, maybe just one or two people that you could journey with daily and ask these questions. Help them, ask them to help you as you work out what life looks like and, and where God features, how God features, how remaining in Jesus features in your day. Pray about that. Think about this through life groups as well. Who can you enlist to support you to help you build your trellis and who can you help to build theirs? Build your trellis intentionally, enlist support, and then thirdly, embrace the space. Now, this is a very stressful time and we all need a certain amount of escape um, at times, but we have to be really careful. And I think especially so in this time when we're so reliant on technology to put careful boundaries around our use of tech. It is so easy to fill every waking moment with the distraction of technology. And there's a couple of problems with that. The first is that ultimately it's not healthy or life-giving. So I had a day the other day where I woke up and it felt from the moment I woke up, my, my phone was going off with messages and WhatsApps and news feeds and Zoom meetings and you know, everything else that was, that was running on through from, from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to bed. Did I feel like I'd remained in Jesus at the end of that day? Not really, I felt like I'd abided, been abiding in lots of different things, but I didn't feel like it had been a day of abiding in Jesus because it just filled the whole time. Secondly, and I guess this comes out of that, if we give in to that, um, that tendency to, towards distraction, which I think in our society we do so much, if we do that all the time, we will miss an opportunity, a, a golden opportunity, to foster our relationship with God in this time. Constant technological distraction kills prayerful connection. It can be the enemy of abiding in him. Now, please don't hear what I'm not saying. Of course, technology is incredibly valuable to us at the moment. It's, it's been a precious, precious gift. But because of that, all the more so, we need to put boundaries into place to limit it. So to, to summarise, I guess we are all in a position of building trellises right now. And the trellis that we build in this season is going to shape uh, how we grow, who we become, in this season and whether we'll be fruitful. And we all want to be fruitful, don't we? We all want to remain in Jesus. And, you know, I have to say, this isn't about legalism. This isn't about putting more pressure on you. Maybe you feel like you're just hanging on at the moment, hanging in there. Maybe this last week has been one of the hardest weeks you can ever remember. I don't want you to hear that this is another thing to do on top of all the other things that you're struggling to do. It's kind of the opposite. This is about allowing God's grace to be at work in our lives. This is about allowing God to help us be fruitful in all those other things that we are trying and struggling to do. This is about allowing him to give us his peace in the midst of this almighty storm that we are experiencing right now. This is about positioning ourselves to receive his blessing. So that said, I'm just going to finish by reading John chapter 15, verse 5, one more time, and then we'll pray. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Lord, these are strange times and our world has been turned upside down. And we recognise that in order to do anything good, to become anything good, to grow well in this time, we need to remain in you. And so I pray that you'd help each one of us as we come to terms with uh, a, a completely altered reality. You would inspire us, send your spirit upon us to teach us, to guide us. 
Help us to make uh, time for you, space for you, and help us to understand or see how we can help one another in that. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for your promises to us. May we remain in you in this season. Amen.